This is Commander Bacon with His Way Homestead, and today we're going to be assembling one of my own design quail cages. So stay tuned. I got my lovely assistant Andy here. He's helping me. This is actually going to him and his wife Jennifer. So already got all the pieces cut according to the plans that are available. Uh, and if you want those plans, really would appreciate a donation because there's a lot of work and effort went into it. Uh, you can uh, see the link uh, on our about page uh, on how to support us through PayPal. But we're gonna show you how, once you've got all the pieces together, what else it takes to assemble the whole thing. So right now, I just put the hinges on one of the doors. So this is one of the doors. I put this piece of uh, aluminum angle on it. And all I did was support it by two other inch and a half pieces of wood. So had it like there so that I could put the screws in. Uh, just cut a piece of like five inches of uh, angle iron, the uh, aluminum, and uh, drilled some holes in it and then screwed it in there. So what'll happen is this will sit in the top frame assembly and everything will sit flush because of this little piece of aluminum. That's what's gonna hold it all together. So now that we got that, um, we're gonna install the hinges on the back side of it. I'm just gonna hold up here a second because I might need my lovely assistant Andy to operate the camera. What I did was marked uh, two and a half inches off the edge this way and that way. And if you notice, I did all the construction with half lap joints. See the half lap? They're glued and screwed. But where the hinges go, I want the longest piece on top. And then this, you can put that on the other direction. I just, I like it better that way. It's just uh, my own personal preference. Nothing really uh, earth shattering about it. Nothing crazy, but uh, that's kind of where it's at. Okay, so I like these um, tech screws. These are lath screws. They got big old heads on them and they're self-drilling, self-tapping. Uh, sharp point, it's easy to deal with it. So all, all I like to do is take these hinges and I'll hinge it and put it right on the corner. I'm sure there's other ways to do it. It's kind of like how I like to do it. And we're just going to screw that in. Okay, so we'll just do it again for the other side. You can go ahead. Now we're going to attach the um, the one inch by one inch wire mesh to the door, to the top of the door, the underside of the door. So we'll flip this over and I'm gonna use half inch staples for my pneumatic nail gun. And we'll show you how to do that. So just, are you still going? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just tried to uh, center everything up on here. A lot of times you'll be looking at the, um, the inside wire. Kind of flatten it out a little bit so to make it worse <laughs> maybe we'll just do it this way and have it pop up um so yeah we'll just it seems like this this wire goes right around the perimeter so it takes a nail gun i usually like to start out in the middle and work my way around like every other one this really doesn't take that long to do, it's pretty quick. There's one side done. I usually like to go to the opposite side, pull it a little tight. Try to get some of the sloppiness out of it. Go. And here I'm going to attach it to this 
strand that's on the bottom. So they got one strand of wire on top, one on the bottom. So we're just gonna do the one closest to the wood. It'll make it, the sta staples go in a little bit easier. Now this is sticking up a little bit. I don't like that. So we're gonna go ahead and pack that down. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Then we go and flip it to the last side. Do the same thing. I know the plans that I have were basically just uh, how to cut the wood in order to get the lap, half lap joints to work out. So I thought I'd show you a video on how to actually assemble it. I didn't bore you with assembling the half lap joints because it is what it is. You just put the half laps together, glue it, and screw it. All right, so we got to put wire on this last door and then we'll show you how we assemble it to the top assembly. Okay, so we got the wire on the door. And now we just have to, and when we got the hinges on the door, we've got the stop on the door. So all we gotta do is assemble the door to the top frame assembly. Again, it's just half lap joints. Y'all can figure that out. The, the size to cut it, the size of the half laps to cut, all that is on the plans. So what we're gonna do is take our one inch tech screws we're going to center this up as much as possible in just by eye in this assembly sling that down we got the screw on there we're going to do the center one first there we go we're going to go ahead and do the center one on this other hinge So I'm also pulling it tight up against this piece. This piece is tight up against this one. And because of how the hinges are, it's gonna, the hinge is gonna cause it to swing away from the frame. In case you don't believe me, there you go. And it really shouldn't bind. Uh, the reason why it might not be sitting flush right now is because this wire is taking up space on the table. Now we're just going to put the screws in the hinges and then we're going to install the other door and this top assembly will be done and we'll put the one inch square wire on all the other pieces and then we'll work on assembling everything. Stay tuned. So this is the back assembly. This is the front piece assembly. And what we're doing now is measuring this one by one square fencing and we're cutting it the length first and then we'll cut it to the appropriate width and then we'll staple it onto the piece of wood. So stay tuned. So this is the end piece. It'll sit up like this. So one thing you gotta remember with this, you have to draw a line an inch and a half back and don't let your wire go past that line. Okay, on both ends, because this is gonna get bolted together. There'll be the other, the front and the rear. Oh, easy. Easy bacon. All right. Hold on. Man down. Man down. Okay, so the so the back piece and the front piece will come in and sit. Well, actually, no, I was wrong. They'll sit like that. No, they will be. They'll be like this. Okay. So you need room for that wire. Okay. And it's much better to have um, wood to wood connection than, than the wire sandwich between the wood connection. So that's why you got to stay back an inch and a half from the edge, both sides, put your wire on. All right. All right. This next, next part is pretty critical. This is the front of the cage and this is where the uh, J feeders will be. So this bottom line right here has to be tight has to be right and tight, okay? So we're, what we're gonna do, we're gonna try something out. We, we've got the other end stap stapled in place there. And we're going to try to take clamps and draw this up tight and then we'll, we'll staple it in, so. 
we'll see how it goes. All right, so we're just gonna take these clamps. We're gonna go into one of the um, squares. I don't, uh, it's not gonna work. It wants to twist on me. It's cantilevering. Let me see if I can do it there. Maybe. Uh, see, it wants to. Oh, there we go. Once I got it past a certain point, it did it. Here's this one. Yeah. It's a booger. There we go. That's much better. Let me get this plastic on here. I think part of it too, it's drawing the wood in, which that's fine. So once we take the clamps off, the wood will spring out and it'll be tight, 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 tight. It's fairly tight. So we need to make sure it's flush with the bottom. Tight. A little wavy down through there. <laughs> That's the worst part about dealing with these fences. It's uh, coming off the rolls, it gets all kinky and curly and not fun. That's why I have my lovely assistant Andy here to work with the fence. <laughs> all right, so we're just going to staple all along the top of this and we'll be done with putting wire on most of the parts except the floor. So the next part will be the floor. Stay tuned. All right, so now we got all the uh, fencing and all the wire on. Not fun putting it on the bottom. And now we're gonna start attaching the pieces together. So uh, I like to use these Power Pro One screws. They're a quarter inch by two and a quarter inches. And what we'll do is we'll take a Forstner bit, we'll pilot hole or countersink to this and then bolt it together that way. This is a self-drilling, self-tapping kind of kind of screw. No pre-drilling needed. But in order for this to get tight, we're gonna drill a hole through here with a countersunk so that screw head will be flush. So stay tuned. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna countersink this hole here. We're just gonna go as deep as the Forstner bit. And that's all we're gonna go. We're gonna put one in the middle, uh, in the middle of the side piece, roughly. All right. And then one at the front end of it. And that's the deepest we're gonna go. Drill bit in it. We're gonna shove it off the side. I don't want to drill into that side piece. And we're just gonna go look, look down in there. There's a little point with that Forstner bit. See a little point right there? We're gonna put our drill bit right in there. It's gonna center that hole. It'll be centered perfectly. And you might end up cutting through wire. It's okay. I'm sure you heard that. All right. Now we're going to line up the side piece. All right. So we're just putting some clamps on it. This will help hold everything in the right place until we get the screws in it. Clamp 
this one. Five sixteenths driver on my impact wrench. All it is. If it ain't tight, it ain't right. Get it in here. Okay, so we're going to just repeat this process, tie all the sides and the back and the front together, and uh, we'll, then we'll flip it all over and put the top on. Okay, so we got this side, the back, and the other side on, and it's upside down. This is the bottom, so right now we're going to spin it around, we're going to screw the, uh, the front on it. After we get the front, then we're going to flip the whole thing upside down and, and screw on the top. And then all we have to do is drill some holes, throw in some carriage bolts, mount the legs, and bada boom, bada bing, we're done. Stay tuned. So the thing you gotta watch here is this is double thickness. This is three inches across. And you've got, you're screwing into this right here. So this is only inch and a half thick. So you gotta make sure that you're, you're centered, you're three quarter inch off, off this edge in order to get your bolt to be centered in this other piece that it's screwing into. Does that make sense? Yeah, you got it. Okay, so now we got the front attached, still upside down. We got it attached with one screw on one side and one screw on the other side. Now we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna put the top on this bad boy. Okay, so we've got the top set in place. We're gonna drill some countersink holes and drill holes and screw screws and get this top permanently attached. So no point in boring you with that. This video is starting to get long already. So we'll come back after we get it together and we start putting the legs on this thing. Stay tuned. Okay, so here's the finished quail cage. Just the box itself. We don't have legs on it. We don't have the watering system. We don't have the feeder, but there it is. What do you think, Andy? I think it's great. It's awesome. I love it. Where'd you get that Mickey Mouse shirt? <laughs> Walmart. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Anyway, uh, so yeah, we're just, uh, we got to gotta drill the pivot point for the legs. Well, actually for the box is right here. Dead center of this 10 inch piece, right? Three quarter inches <laughs> off of this. We'll throw a carriage bolt in there and attach the leg to it. And then we'll clamp the front of the cage to the front part of the leg. So stay tuned, we'll get that done. You ready? Cool. All right, so we're gonna measure three quarter of an inch in. And let's see what the overall on this is. It's 13 inches, so we're gonna go six and a half. The three quarter up here at the six and a half mark. All right, that's where we're gonna drill our hole. Stay tuned. All right, you ready? Yep. All right, so we're just gonna drill this hole, this uh, quarter inch hole through here. We got a quarter inch lag bolt. And hopefully we won't hit that one inch square wire on the other side. All right, there's that one. Now, we're gonna measure six and a half inches down here and mark it. And three quarter inches in, that'll center it up in this leg, this part of the leg. And we're gonna drill a hole through this. I'm gonna get it squared up as possible so I can drill it straight.
All right. What we're going to do is open the lid. Easy opening. It stays open. Take this lag bolt through there. Let me find the hammer. Get the hammer. We'll give this guy a tap from this side. Set that carriage bolt head in there. How long carriage bolts did you get? These look really long. You told me to get three and a half or four, and they only had four. Okay. Three would not have worked. Okay. Well, shoot. I want to go ahead and put a washer in between them. Don't necessarily want them to bind up that much. We'll put a washer there. Do that. And we'll cut this, we'll cut this off. The washer on there, put a nut. And we got a jam nut here too. So this will lock it, keep it from backing off and falling apart. Okay? That makes sense? All right, somehow we're gonna have to flip this around and or support it with the table. Okay. We're just going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to drill another hole, throw this leg on, and be done with this one. Okay, so here we go. We've got the carriage bolt in there. And all we did, we took a three-inch clamp, C-clamp, and clamped the bottom to this leg. Okay? So that gives you infinite variability on the angle so that your eggs roll out at the appropriate degree and you have super happiness with the eggs rolling out and catches so you got a little got a little lip here i don't know if you can see it a little lip right here with that wire and that's going to keep the eggs from rolling off and falling and breaking so this is it we are done thank you so when you're using it as a brooder brooder and the, 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 your quail are not at the age of laying eggs, I highly recommend raising this up so it's flat. There's no point in having them walk on an angle if not necessary. If they're not laying eggs, put it flat. And then once, once you feel confident with this angle, you can always drill a hole in that leg and screw it to the bottom and get rid of the C-clamps. Or you can just leave the C-clamps. I leave the C-clamps on, and uh, it's good enough. So what do you think, Andy? I think it's a great job. It's, an, it's pretty awesome. We're done for tonight? Yes, sir. All right. Andy said we're done. We're done. So until next time, I hope you like this video. Hit the thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs up. And if you don't, just don't say anything. Just go away. Uh, I hope you do like it, though. And if you need to, um, if you need the plans to cut, get the cut pieces that go along with this uh, assembly video, uh, you can shoot me an email at hiswayhomestead4u at gmail.com. And uh, don't forget, hit the subscribe button. Not yet, Andy. Hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Pound that bell so that you get notifications every time we post a new video. And, okay, Andy, don't forget, his way is the, best way is the best way. See you later. God bless.